So in the last video, we got this thing running and it sounds so good. Definitely check it out. We actually had to buy two extra parts bikes to get it here, but now it's time to get this thing closer to being able to rip. So what we're gonna try to do in this video is we need to completely do our shifter. We finished the clutch and kind of the, the skeleton for the shifter, but we need to add the cables. And we also need to make the wiring um, extended. We need to add our gauge cluster up here. We need to add some switches and stuff like that for lights we're gonna add in the future. So we have a lot of work to do. It's kind of that last 20% that takes the longest in a build. So we're just gonna keep grinding, try to get this thing done. First thing we're gonna do is the clutch. So we had some different ideas of how to do this. We were thinking of maybe like a rod or something like that, but we think the easiest way, because this will be flexing so much, is just like a little two cable system. So up front, we're gonna have two cables, one for upshifting and one for downshifting. And then that's gonna go back to uh, the factory clutch lever in the back that will then just connect back to our shifter. So here's our kind of factory ninja kick rod here. Um, I cut off the end piece. Um, but we're gonna have to do a little bit more cutting. So the idea is we want it to be closer to mounted surfaces. That way we don't have to have a bunch of hanging wires and stuff out over here. So all we're gonna do is just mount this here and then kind of extend these so they connect. That way we can shift it just like this. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this cause we need to make it, cause on the bike it was you kick up and down with your foot and we need it to be going this way. So we're gonna chop this off and weld on a vertical piece. We are actually gonna have to redo this uh, shift linkage right here. I mean, we knew it wasn't pretty, we we're gonna work on it more, but we found out that kind of the cables were binding and since everything was at like different angles and nothing really lined up perfectly, it kind of just bound and really didn't want to shift. So what we're gonna do is since this linkage right here is a nice, has these two ball joints on the end, we can flip it so that it's sideways. spent like another hour redoing all of this but way better and then all we'll have is kind of the wires at a little bit of an angle so they're pulling kind of the whole way and that will just be we'll get a lot more travel it'll be a lot more straighter pull and it'll be symmetrical so all our problems are solved So we just got our shifter on, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start mounting the things like in the electronic systems, like the CDI box and this gauge cluster here. So what that's gonna include is we wanna make it feel as much of a car as play as possible. That's why we kinda have the low shifter and stuff. So the idea is this is just gonna go right up in here like this. Um, it's gonna give you a good driving feel. You'll be able to see it right through the steering wheel like you would a car. So Basically all we need to do to mount this is there's these two factory brackets right here and we'll just bolt it in. Our gauge cluster mounted and it looks really good. So now we need to mount our ignition switch and then all of the little buttons we have. We have the horn, the starter, the kill switch, uh, the lights, so a bunch of stuff like that. So our plan is we're gonna have this switch right up here and then we're gonna have a 90 going up here with a panel and then we'll have all our switches and all our labels underneath. Ha <laughs> 
<laughs> so we spent a little bit working on this little gauge cluster or switch mount and it's gonna be really cool. So basically the key is gonna fit in this hole we made right here. And then basically right here is gonna be all our other switches and things we need for accessories, stuff like that. So now what I gotta do is I gotta make little mounts for the um, tabs in here that go in the back. And then we also need to drill the holes for our other switches, but we're kind of starting to get the idea of how everything's gonna fit in here. So we just did a battery tie down and we're getting that set up so our battery won't bounce around. Yep, and we also did this switch panel. So we got our ignition right there and then we're gonna have a horn, ignition switch, lights, kill switch, all a bunch of other stuff. And then right now I'm just working on the wiring, kind of cleaning up stuff we don't need, lengthening wires that need to be lengthened and just trying to clean it up and make it look nice. Okay, so we basically just mounted the stock Ninja 250 rear brake setup here um, because it basically utilizes things like having some leverage to push down the um, master cylinder as well as this brake switch here. Um, so the idea is we just have the cable pulling from this direction. It's going to go through something like this and when you push down the pedal, it'll go like this. So what we'll do now is probably just going to end up, we're probably just going to bleed the brakes because this is kind of the configuration we want to have and then we can test it out. Bleed the brakes, we have our hydraulic bleeder tool here, and it should be pretty easy. So what we did is I put in a Go Power Sports bearing hanger because we have a couple extra. And because our steering wheel was kind of sloppy and we had to move it back a little bit to clear our gauges and stuff. But now this thing is super solid. Um, I mean, it spins like it's on a bearing. So that's awesome. So Jason's just finishing up the wiring. We're going to bolt the seat back in. And the real, the real thing has been just Jason grinding on wiring because there's probably like 30, 40 wires that need to go full length of this frame. So we're just kind of trying to just do things to make it so when he's done with the wiring, we'll just be able to hop in this thing, turn the key, hit the starter button on the dash, and then just drive forward. So that's the name of the game for ending up this episode, but we still have a lot of work to do, guys. So I just finished up the throttle, and um, it's really responsive. We were able to get it to like end at the factory pedal stop. It was pretty easy, although um, basically we don't have any go-kart cables long enough and the Ninja has a really weird um, like carb like uh, where the, th the cable goes into so we decided what to do is just to bridge the two cables with kind of a like a system that held both wires back and then had the cables connected in between with a barrel clamp and that works out really well so now we have all factory Ninja back where the engine is and then basically all just any typical go-kart up front. So we need a box to hold all our extra wires and our junction box and our CDI box and all of that stuff. So we're originally gonna go with this small ammo box, but we have problems getting it to fit around the brake and the shifter linkage and the frame when it'll be flexing. All right, so the only thing that was the right size at Walmart is this frozen tackle box. But it should fit really well and it's kind of the perfect size. We have room between the spring and the frame and everything. So we just need to give it a little paint job and peel off the stickers. Who said we're painting it? I'm finishing stuffing. I mean, a lot of this isn't hooked up or cut down yet, but it's looking like everything will be able to fit in here. So sorry this video is a day late, but as you can see, there's a reason for it. We want to make sure that we're doing the wiring right and we only have to do it once. We want it to all be just like one big harness that we can just unplug because we are going to have to take this thing apart again to do painting. So we're getting there. Yeah, all we need. Okay, we're going to finalize the 
some wiring and let him drive it. This took a while, but kind of bundled all the wires together and this is one of the plugs going up to the front and our horn and auxiliary lights. Yeah. It's really, it look, kind of looks like a factory harness. We're going to wire wrap everything. It's going to be really nice. Yeah. With wire wrap, this thing will just kind of lay up nice. We're finally done with all the wiring. Um, it's not exactly final yet. We are going to still need to take it off to paint it. So we're going to do the wire wrap later. But this is kind of the final routing. It looks so much cleaner, amazing. Um, so, yeah, here's the horn. And then the starter. So, I mean, so far so good. We'll see if we can get it running and driving. All right, test time, Tyler. Of course, there's gonna be two of us in here, so let's see what happens. All right. <laughs> Wheels straight, I guess. On. Okay, I guess we'll do the clutch in just in case too. It'll start. And then... super successful we got all the wiring done we got the deuce uh, all wired up and driving under its own power it definitely still has more work to do we definitely need to kind of feel fool with the shifter and stuff but overall really good success stay tuned for the next video we're gonna put in a windshield some aluminum body panels some door bars some lights rally mirrors and a bunch of other really cool stuff so stay tuned for that thank you go power sports for all the parts on this thing links are in the description and thank you DG for the awesome exhaust Check us out on Instagram at Bill Burger Pete and see you next time.